Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to check out this Tessman TCM300D smart clamp meter. This thing is dirt cheap. I've been using it for a few weeks now. I'm going to share all my thoughts and feedback with you and we're going to put it through some paces and see what it's made of. Let's get right into it. If you've watched any of my videos over the last few weeks, you've seen this meter uh, and cameo appearance, if you will. I've been using it, uh, testing out on different things to uh, you know see its accuracy and ease of use, things like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the price on this meter before we get into the video. It's hard to believe this meter is as cheap as it is. Right now, it's $49.99 with the 50% coupons. That makes this meter $42.49. So take that price into consideration during today's video. And what do you get if you decide to pick up a Tessman TCM300D clamp meter? Well, of course, you get the meter itself. With batteries, I'll show you the batteries in just a second. You get a nylon carrying case, zippered pouch with a little carry handle so you can put it in your tool bag or you can put it in your truck or on your bench or whatever uh, suits your needs. You get a user manual, a Type K thermocouple for remote temperature readings, and test probes. Our leads for this meter are roughly 32 inches in length. So I'm sure it's a metric length, but for United States, just 32 inches. So it gives you plenty of room to do whatever kind of work you need to. And the leads are a little stiff compared to, you know, fluke and field piece, of course, but this is a dirt cheap meter and these are perfectly acceptable 600 volt rated. And the Type K temperature sensing lead is also 32 inches in length. So, you know, you got plenty of room to set your meter up on something and take temperature readings off whatever you see fit as well. Then there's a multi-language user manual comes with this meter. So I will open and try to find that page where I saw all the different languages. So there is the, I guess, target markets. There's all the languages you get and roughly about 16 pages of information. And it's a very thorough manual. Shows you pretty much uh, everything you need to know how to use this meter. And then the battery access tray is on the back of the meter right here. And I do like they use a number two Phillips on this one instead of a little tiny micro number one or some kind of oddball screw on the back to access your batteries. So let me take this cover off and check out what they give you. That's right, all Tessman products come with Duracell batteries. So not some no-name battery, they start you off right with some good batteries. I like to see that. So after you've got your batteries in the battery tray in their proper position, to turn the meter on, of course, you just hit the power button, just a you know, one second push. It comes on and does a calibrate function every time you power up the meter. It's also got an automatic power off function after 15 minutes. I've left the automatic power function enabled. You can disable it and the meter will never shut off. But I have a bad habit of leaving the meter clamped on something and walk away for an hour or whatever. So I've left that on to save the battery. And I like this meter because it's very beginner friendly and it's true RMS readings on this meter as well. The first four functions of the meter are automatic. It's got an auto function. It scans through, through its leads and through its clamp to determine what you're trying to do. It'll just pick it up automatically. I'll demonstrate that for you in just a minute. But if you don't want to let the auto function go through, you can manually pick whatever you want. So you can pick current, voltage, resistance, continuity, diode checks, millivolt range, uh, frequency and duty cycle right there, and we have capacitance right there. Uh, temperature for the remote probe, it's also got the built-in probe right there. I'll go over everything momentarily, and then we got non-contact voltage and live wire detection. So packed full of features, you know, for a cheap meter. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the temperature reading functions on this meter. It's got two different readings. It's got a built-in sensor, and then we've got our remote Type K. So I'm going to sw switch over here, function. I'm going to scroll through to our temperature settings right here. And if you don't have the probe, the remote probe in, it just shows you the temperature of the meter. And it's, I think the probe is, actual internal probe is back in the back somewhere because it does pick up heat off your hands. Uh, it's not that warm in here, so... You know, take that into consideration too, showing 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 26.8 degrees Celsius. So if we plug in the Type K into the meter right here, then we'll have the remote temperature right there. So see that? We've got the remote temperature and boom, shows you the remote display right there. So pretty quick, pretty accurate, you know, picking up heat real fast and then it'll cool it back down. Say dropping right back down. So yes, pretty pretty quick reading on the temperature side on this meter. And then if you unplug the Type K, the temperature display 
goes back to the built-in temperature sensor that's in the meter itself. I find that pretty neat. And the meter's also got a hold and flashlight function. So you can hold your readings like that, or you can hold the button down longer, and we get a nice little, little flashlight right there. So if you know you're in an attic or under a house or under the hood of your truck or whatever, uh, you got a nice little flashlight. You know, it's partially blocked by the clamp right there, but if you're in complete darkness, it will help you out. And the meter's also got min max functions and it's also got inrush functions and the select button right here allows you to select through different settings in the same category. So right here on current, you can see it's DC right there. I can hit the select button and goes to AC current detection, which is pretty nice. And I'll do the same thing. I'll switch to voltage and this meter is biased to DC. So for your DIY solar people, you know, this one, when you turn it on, you don't have to switch from AC over to DC. It's automatically biased that direction. I do like that as well. So if we're reading voltage, you know, auto DC, just hit select and we can go back to AC. And this is of course in the manual selection. If you do an automatic, it does all of it for you. So let me demonstrate that for you. So for what I'm going to do today, I'm going to take the category three shields off of the probes right there. And that takes me down to a category two probe, but that's fine for what I'm doing. So I've got the meter in automatic. Like I showed you a minute ago, when you turn on goes to auto, I've got the probes in. So I'm on a power strip from the 12 volt inverter right here. I'm just going to probe this. I'm going to show you another cool feature that I really like about this meter right here. So put your probes in, it auto tracks and check that out. It shows you the frequency of what you're reading when you're checking AC voltage on this cheap meter. So you get your voltage and a frequency display, 59.7 Hertz, 119.3 volts. Now ain't that cool. I still got the meter on the auto function. I haven't changed anything besides just powering it up. So DC right here, boom. Pretty quick reading, 13.17 volts DC. So the meter does pick up voltages and reads fairly quickly. All right, so I'm gonna take some current readings with the clamp of this meter. I'm gonna show you one little thing right quick too before, before I take the readings. I'm gonna go back over here, hit the function button to DC current right there. You can see it's 0.02 of an amp, 0.04. It's picking up some transients. There's a lot of electrical noise in here. But if you happen to power it up and it was reading like 0.1 or 0.2 or something like that, and you needed to zero that DC reading out, you can hold the select button right here, and that will zero out your DC readings right there and recalibrate the meter. So I've got the meter back in the auto function, you know, as it powers up, I'm gonna take a DC current reading right here on this negative cable coming to the inverter right there. So clamp it on, give it a second, and let it take a reading, 5.61 amps. And I will reduce the load so you can watch it track right there. See, back down to two, 5.18, 2.17, 2.18, 2.17. So just demonstrating everything for you. And I'm gonna demonstrate the hold function as well. Remember the hold button on the side. So I can hit the hold button right there. I can change, see, changing the load and it's holding that last reading that I took. Hit the button right there. Hold function goes away, back to live readings. And the AC current tracking works just as good as the DC. I'm just not taking the panel covers off today but you'll have to take my word on that, that the AC current readings work just fine as well. So I've still got the meter and the auto section. I'm not going to any of the advanced menus on this meter yet. So yeah, this one's packed full of features for the price. So I've got the leads back in the meter. So I got a three pole contactor right here. I'm going to check the coil on this contactor to see if it's good. So I will probe the coil, put my leads right there on the coil and it is going to continuity. So 6.8 ohms, check some things. I just put it on straight resistance right there and check across the coil the same way. So 6.8 ohms of resistance across that 24 volt AC coil, which is right. And another good way to check your meter leads and stuff on low price meters and check the meter itself, just check across the leads itself and make sure you get a complete zero reading, which this one does. Now I'll show you the capacitance function on this testman. One thing to note on this little cheap test right here, remember $42 meter, it is a little slow to read capacitance. This is a 265 microfarad capacitor. So let's see what the meter says. Try to move out your way right here so you can see the screen on the meter properly. See, it takes it just a, you know, a few seconds to read right there. 
So we are showing two 66.7 microfarads, 267. So right on the money. So that capacitor is you know, reading properly. We'll do the non-contact voltage setting. So scroll on through right here to non-contact voltage. And I'll show you this function now. So for the non-contact voltage, your sensor for that is right here in the little bump out on the clamp. And it's for helping identify live wires. Please don't trust non-contact for putting your hands on it. This is to help trace out a live wire in a conduit or a junction box, isolating circuits, things like that. Help me determine the live wire, not for you know safety as far as working on the circuit to know it's dead or not. This is not the most sensitive uh, non-contact voltage. And again, it's a cheap meter. Uh, you know, it picks up you know through the power strip and it'll pick up through the jack of the wire i would like to see that as a you know red light you got to get right on the breaker right on you know right at the source uh to get the light to turn red but you know it will pick that up so you could trace down wires and things uh to help you out in whatever needs uh you see fit for that function and i'll show us talking about you gotta be right near the breaker and things to get the lead to turn or the indicator to turn red right there you see right on the breaker it shows the high voltage uh, and you take it away it goes away right there so you know and then we'll put on the dead the breaker is off right here see nothing and then back to this breaker just demonstrating for you and if you want to use the live wire detection function in this meter we're in the same menu the non-contact voltage live wire menu just hit the select button right there insert your test lead right there and then we can go down here and we can probe for live wires. So right there, showing high voltage, just like it's supposed to. So I wanna share my final thoughts on the Tessman uh, TCM300D smart clamp meter. Do I have any complaints after several weeks going on? Yeah, about two months now uh, using this meter. Uh, no complaints so far. It's done everything I've asked it to do. And the biggest attractor for this meter, I, I think, is its DC current measuring capabilities for a $42 meter. And all the other features are, are just extra bonuses that what it can do. So it's a pretty good meter for $42. Bucks. Uh, no complaints yet. If any complaints develop or I see something I don't like or if it tears up tomorrow, I'll update you. You can trust me on that. So I feel this meter would fit a wide range of individuals needs from beginner to professional, anywhere in between. It's got features and functionality to fit most use case scenarios. So what do y'all think about this little testman meter? Let me know in the comments if you like this little meter. Anything else you want me to cover on this meter? Let me know down below. And do you have this meter or something similar? How do you use your electrical meters? Let me know in the comments. And I'll have a convenient link so you can you know, check this meter out. Easy to find it if you want to pick one up yourself. So thank y'all for watching today. Appreciate y'all. Y'all take care. Be safe. I'll see you on the next one. Special thanks to Testman for providing this sample for me to review over the last several weeks so I could share my thoughts and opinions on the meter.